Like whoever talks to the most people with the best intentions and then builds a brand around that with those people forever wins. This is what I believe. I'm sharing that with you for nothing. Just get out there and succeed. I've always been super ambitious. I always knew I was gonna be right here where I'm at. I didn't know exactly how I was gonna get there, what vehicle I was gonna use, but I've just always been really ambitious. Anything I ever tried to do, I was really good at it. Like, not because I was talented, but because I would work at it consistently. You know, I did a bunch of different things uh, growing up, you know, sports, art, music, um, work. You know, I grew up roofing houses with my dad. Um, that's what I did as a job as a teenager because he had a, he owned a roofing business So, you know, like everything in my life is always what's the next level? What's the next step? How can I you know conquer? How can I dominate? How can I be the best and You know when I got out of high school, it was like college was the next thing What you're supposed to do so I'm gonna go crush that so I went to four different colleges in two years failed a history class and uh, a University of Alabama and decided college was not for me that wasn't gonna be what got me where I wanted to go so I decided I found out real estate was one class and I was like bingo so I jumped on that and I've always been really good at not only being ambitious and figuring out what the next level is and then putting forth a lot of hard work behind it but also figuring out what's most efficient what what can get me to the next level the quickest and so that's basically like the story of my life, man, is just finding out how it can, you know, be the best, the most efficient, the quickest, you know, I'm going to outwork everybody. It's like, I'm going to work smarter and harder all at once. And, um, you know, I got in real estate cause I wanted to help people. That was my whole thing. But when I got in, the market was starting to heat up and I kind of lost sight of that and started, it kind of shifted to just making money and doing deals. Um, cause deals were just falling out of the sky. And that was eventually what took me out, that mentality. I, uh, you know, I made a meal before I was 23 and lost it all a couple years later in the crash, you know, and it was literally because I was focused on the deals and the closings and the money, not the people and what I could do to help my clients through the crash. You know, I had, a, I just, I had the mainstream mentality of when it crashes, you got to get out of the business and stuff. You know, I didn't really understand how the whole game works. So how do you get most of your business now? Dude, like, there's people everywhere. You know what I mean? People want to make this so complicated. It's like, just go talk to people and see what you can do to help them. Tell them you're an agent. What can you do? What can I do to help you? You know? I mean, it's really that simple. You know, people want to pay hundreds of dollars for leads. These leads are random people in your in your market's contact information that these companies are just getting the getting the contact information and then selling them to you for hundreds of dollars saying that they're motivated hot leads when they're really just random people in your market. You know, I mean, you could have met this person at the grocery store or, you know, just as a, you know, it, it's just crazy how complicated and the whole reason behind why everybody thinks this business is so complicated is because all the people that are making money off of these, these situations are tricking us into thinking that it's so complicated because they're making so much money off of pushing the idea that it's so complicated. When it's really so simple, you just talk to people in your market and see what you can do to help them. Build your database. Like whoever talks to the most people with the best intentions and then builds a brand around that with those people forever wins. You know, and it's really that simple and there's so many different ways you can do it. You can cold call, you can meet people at grocery stores, you can I mean, you know, your, your Facebook, Instagram, like there's so many different vehicles to not only meet people and reach out and see what you can do to help them, but then also build brand with those people moving forward so they never forget you. Oh, like you've heard rumors about how I became a free coach? No, like I've been told, I think someone said that you went to Gary B's 4Ds. Oh yeah. No, I was free before that. Okay. Yeah, I went to Gary Vee's 4Ds, but that was long after I went free. Now, I did get the idea to go free from him, you know, like watching him when he does. It actually sparked the idea, okay? Like, so I never did social media at all until like January 2017. Not one single anything, nothing. 
Um, so 2017 was the first year I did anything social media wise. I didn't even have an Instagram account. Um, I had a YouTube account but never posted anything. I posted a couple of videos about listings but not coaching or anything like that. So I started, like I wrote two books that year and um, I was just trying to figure it all out. So I started out charging and I would charge $20 a month, $150 up front, $20 a month, $1,000 one-time fee, you know, $300 one-time fee, $299 one-time fee, you know, $10 a month. I tried a bunch of different, you know, um, business models to try to figure it out, you know, through a lot of stuff out there trying to figure it all out. And I had 200 paying members. When I decided to go free, I was up to 200 paying members with about $10,000 a month coming in automatically. Um, and it took me about, I came up with the idea and then it took me maybe a month or two of really like mulling it over inside my head, not telling a single soul what I was thinking because I was trying to figure out how crazy it really was or if it really worked. And, uh, you know, the more I thought about it, I was like, man, that's just the way to go. Because what would happen is 300 agents would sign up for my webinar, 100 would show up to it, and one would sign up. One. So you got 300 people that need help, 100 that really wanted the help, and then only one signed up. So that happened a couple times. So I'm sitting here thinking, okay, you know, and it's like, oh, well, you weren't doing the webinar right. Probably. That's probably the case too. But the bigger picture was even if I did it right and got 20 people to sign up, there were still 300 that wanted some help and 100 that really wanted some help and I'm still only getting 20. So really I'm getting like less than 10%, you know what I mean? And then out of that 10% of who pay, what if my program doesn't work for them? Now what are they gonna do? They're gonna turn around and, and, and hate. They're gonna hate on my program because they paid for something that didn't work. So I was like, all right, well look, let me flip this script. I'm going to I'm going to take in that same scenario instead of getting 20 people who may or may not like me at the end of this thing, why don't I create a situation where all 300 people love me till the day I die? See what I'm saying? And so what what's what would I want more? I had to think about. What would I want more? 300 people that love me till the day I die because I helped them and they really succeeded and I gave them everything for free? or 20 people that might like me, not even love, like might like me, maybe, hopefully they like me. Every time I go speak or go to an event or something, you know, there's a hundred people that want to get their picture and talk to me and all this stuff that wouldn't have happened if I wasn't free. So none of this would be happening right now. I probably wouldn't even be here talking to you guys if, if I wasn't free, you know what I mean? And so to take it just a step further before we get into something else, like when you're free, when you say free, it opens the door and the consumer says, okay, they're free. Let me try this out. I love free. I'm going to let my guard down for a minute. Then they get past that, that gate and then they get inside and now they determine, is he really free or not? Because a lot of people say they're free and then they charge on the back end. And so when you, when you say you're free and then you really are free, then it, it goes to a whole nother level. You know, but when you're free and then you try to charge, that's when you create a lot of negativity, I think, out there. And I think it's just the wrong business model. I think the way I do it's the way of the future. And I think I'm way ahead of the curve. Gary Vee was really the one that paved the way, that gave me the idea to really do it this way. But man, has it paid off. How would you, young real estate guys like ourselves, we went into listing appointment on Friday and the you know, the question always comes up, how much you charge? And I think we tried something new. I got it off your video and I said, well, how much you want to pay And the, it turned into this, like, these are the services we provide. This is, uh, you know, we help you move and we have a 24 seven concierge and all that kind of stuff. But I'm curious from your perspective, how you go into those conversations when we're speaking to consumers, not other agents. To be honest with you, man, whenever to the way that I feel about it, whenever you start trying to sell it too hard and say, oh, we got this and we do that and we do this and we've moved and we we got all this stuff. It's just like, man, OK, look, you know, like it, you, you can tell, like for me, whenever they ask me what I charge, I'm like, oh, I charge six percent. And then I like keep the conversation. I make it like 
most agents want to make it like a roadblock where they have to like figure out how to get around it. And for me, it, it's not even a road bump. It's like just it just keeps going. Like it's like what do you charge? I kind of my tone of of when I answer that question makes it sound like it's not a big deal and like what else we have to talk about here you know like that's that that's actually like a mood point you know let's if they start digging it's like look let's let's focus on what you're going to make out of this what do you what do you want your what do you want your you know your take home to be what do you want your net to be you know let's start talking about that and then let's start reverse engineering based on what the market is and let's try to get to the num let's get the numbers where they need to be you know hey i'm negotiable you know, like I, <laughs> I negotiate on just about every deal. To be honest with you, there's probably half of them. I'm negotiating. I'm paying for inspection items. Uh, you know, I'm throwing in a little bit. Uh, you know, on just about half of them. You know, uh, and you know, real estate's so lucrative. I mean, it just really is. It's just such a lucrative business. But we get paid. There's a reason why we get paid so much. There's a lot of liability. There's a lot of work that goes into it. But at the same time, man, there's so much. There's so much margin there. You know, I mean, if you if you quit thinking so, if you quit thinking in such a conservative penny pension way, and start, you know, like think of think of those as investments back into your business because when people see that you're willing to budge for them to make the deal happen they love you so much more than if you try to hold firm on that one hundred dollar thing you know it's like i'll take care i'm not even worried about that i'll take care of that for you as a closing gift how about that and they're like oh my god and so they remember that they come back to you they refer people to you you know it, every every client is worth 10 to 20 deals to me, right? Through repeat business referrals and referrals of referrals. And so I, dude, I'm, and even from day one, I was cutting commissions. I wasn't, this is nothing that I'm doing now that I'm selling so much. This is how I got here, you know? Like it's an investment back into my business. Sure, I'm a heck of a negotiator too now. I will hold firm. I'll hold, I'll wait to the last minute. I will try to make it work where I don't have to, cut i'm really good at that there's plenty of times where i probably should have cut earlier you know but and there's plenty of times where i probably could have cut but i ended up not cutting at all because i'm such a good negotiator and i know what people's motivations are man at the end of the day that buyer wants to buy that property and that seller wants to sell